Welcome back to Jaffa Cooks and today I'm going to show you how to make a steak and mushroom pie. Nice flaky steak, mushroom, steaming hot gravy with some mashed potatoes. I've got some chuck meat which is really just any kind of cheap beef actually that I've took, taken and this is because usually this is a part that doesn't get utilized a lot but if you want to make a nice pie you just need to use any kind of um, chuck meat or so I think even uh, silver side meat should be good as well but what we're going to do is we're going to cook it off till it's nice and tender cool it right down I'll show you how to make a pie crust as well fill it put it in the oven cook it and when it comes out it'll be absolutely divine it'll be something worthwhile waiting for as well so before I start I'm just going to show you uh, we're going to take some flour uh, and I'm just going to lightly coat the flour and the flour coat coating basically is just for two things. One is to seal the meat off and then eventually as well that flour will thicken up some of the sauce. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel please do so. Click on the icon, get the latest updates, share with your family and friends and DM me. Um, I've lightly coated my steak, I'm going to call it actually chuck meat, um, and then I'm going to now saute it off, pop in the onions and mushrooms and then put it on a slow heat for about 50 minutes to maybe even an hour, an hour and a half, until the meat's nice and tender, and then I'm going to cool it down. Okay, so meet you at the hob. Welcome back, everybody. I'm at the hob. I'm just going to use a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. So I'm going to take uh, half, probably half of the mixture or a third of the, the meat, and place it into my pan. Just make sure the pan's hot. No, not yet. And then as they're cooking off, I'll take them out and then cook the rest of them in batches. So keep watching as I brown off steak meat. What we're looking for is that nice golden color. So the pan needs to be on medium to high heat. Let's have a quick look. Yep, nearly there. Maybe a minute or two more. And that's basically all we need, is just to lightly, light, light golden colour. So I think that's good enough for first batch. Just got to put the next batch in. Pan's nice and hot. And that's the final batch. Now in the same pan, I'm just going to start now cooking off the remaining ingredients. So. In go the onions on a medium heat. And that should basically start soaking up any residue of that really nice chuck meat that's left over in the pan. Now I've kept these onions as petals, not diced, because it's always nice to have a little bit of uh, onion paste when you're having steak and mushroom. Pop in the garlic. Again, it's at a low heat to medium heat, not too, not too high. Got some mixed herbs. And salt to pepper to taste. Now, what I've done is I've just put a little bit of salt and pepper to basically start off the cooking seasoning. So do check the seasoning after your stock, go, stock um, goes in. So in go the mushrooms. I'm going to turn up the heat now. Now mushrooms will, again, as I mentioned, mushrooms will release a little bit of water. Okay, so my mushrooms are on their way to being cooked. Good time to place my beef in there. So I'm going to give that a uh, mix and it's already looking really good. That meat is going to be really tender after it's cooked and the mushrooms are going to blend in and give it that extra taste. Now for my stock I've got 750 ml of beef stock which I'm just going to pour into this pan and allow this to come to the first boil. Once it comes up to the first boil, I'm going to then place it on the back burner for about a good 
one hour. And I'll keep an eye on it for every, after every half an hour just to keep make sure that the moisture is still there. What we want to do is bring the moisture down to half the quantity. And by the time it's ready, there should be very little moisture in there. Um, but the meat would have should have cooked off by then. If your meat by 45 minutes to an hour hasn't cooked, then just pour a little bit more boiling water in and just carry on at, at the simmering temperature, the simmering um, heat, and that should eventually uh, cook off the meat. So I'll see you back in about an hour's time. Welcome back, everybody. So my steak and mushroom pie is still on the on the hob. It's still cooking away. I think another half an hour and it should be ready. But in the meantime, we still need to make the pastry. Um, so I've got um, some ground, so just plain flour, some butter, cold, really cold water, and that's about it really. I've got a pinch of salt in there as well. Um, so the recipe is already in the, in the description below. If you want to look at the detailed description of how to put this together. So I'm just going to pour in the, place the flour into the mixer, and when making pastry, two things, cold butter and cold water are key. Um, so I've just really cooled my butter down, kept it in the fridge, and I've only just taken it out now. Another thing that you could do that makes pastry a little bit flakier is to sieve the flour. So I've pre-sieved mine. So I'm just going to give it a quick uh, mix. And whilst I'm doing this, I'm going to start introducing the, the butter into the flour. And we want it to really start crumbling. And once it crumbles, then we'll carry on blending it until it becomes like putty. So bear with me a while. Welcome back, everybody. So my pastry is nice, nicely turned out. Um, what I'm now going to do is basically divide it into two pieces, two thirds and a third. So if I eyeball it round about here, so two thirds will go into the base of the pastry and a third will go to the top of the pastry. So all I'm going to now do is flatten these out a bit because it's easier. Once, once the pastry cools down, it does harden a bit. So sometimes it's easier just to really shape it the way you want. So I'm just going to flatten it a bit. There's my base, there's my top. And if you're short, you can always, once you're rolling out, you can always take some one from the other. What I'm going to do now is just basically roll this up in some cling film. And I'm going to let it rest within the fridge for about 20 minutes, half an hour. And then I'm going to come back and show you how to really roll this out and put it into a pastry casing. And then all we've got to then do is just wait for our steak and mushroom to cool down, place it inside the casing, put a top on it, pastry top, and then we'll put it in the oven for about 45, 50 minutes to bake it off. See you shortly. Welcome back everybody. Um, so my pastry is nice and cold now. So now's the time to really just roll it out and, and place it on top of our dish. What I've got is basically two sheets of parchment paper. So I'm, to make things easier, I'm just going to place the pastry on top of the parchment paper. And this actually makes life a lot easier as well. Place the other sheet on top and really just roll. Um, and it does two things. It stops the rolling pin and the pastry from sticking as well. Um, and it's a lot easier to maneuver as well, just like that. So I'm just going to roll this out. My pan is about 11 inches. I'll need probably another two inches each side. So about 13 inches um, because I need the pastry to go above the um, edges. So I'm going to carry on rolling, and I'll see you in a short while. Just an added tip, um, when you're rolling out 
um, your pastry. Actually, it makes life a lot easier as well. You take your hand and just gently rub it across. You can actually feel your pastry is even. Um, and if it isn't, you can actually just, with your palm, just level it out as well. So I feel that my pastry is quite leveled out. It doesn't need any more work. And then don't forget as well, we don't want additional heat transferring to the, the pastry as well. So I can still feel it's nice and cold. Just to um, measure out how deep my dish is and relation to the pastry. Um, yep, I can actually pretty much go over the top. Just a couple of edges I need to round off and I'll be ready. And if your pastry does crack or split, it really isn't a problem. Um, if you watch some of my videos, even my pastry is split. And it's good that you get to learn how to basically control the pastry um, if it does crack and split. It's very simple, just patch it up. And I'm just going to roll the pastry onto my rolling pin. And very carefully, I'm going to position my pastry on top of my pastry tin and unroll it. And that basically is my pastry on top of my dish. Now I'm just going to go and get some kitchen towel. And kitchen towel basically helps me maneuver the, the pastry into the corners. Back in a minute. Right, welcome back everyone. So I've just, all I've done is just basically taken some kitchen towel and, and really just created a cushion out of it. And all I'm going to do, instead of me touching with the hand, I'm just going to touch it with the, with the, um, with my homemade cushion. Or my, I'm going to call it a pastry cushion actually. Um, and this basically allows me to just push that pastry further into the corner without touching it. Sometimes you'll find that you're very close to the edge and you've got some additional piece here. Just patch it up. Welcome back everybody. So I'm about to roll out my second pastry sheet. Now if your pastry filling is still warm, I do advise you to cool it right down or at least bring it down to room temperature before you start filling in your pie. And the reason is because if filling is still warm, then that's going to transfer, the heat's going to transfer into the pie crust, and that's basically going to make it very gooey. So if at this stage your pastry is still, your pie filling is still warm, then do cool it right down. Right, let's get this finished off. Keep watching, and I'll roll this out when I get to the filling stage. I'll come back to you. Just wanted to show you how moist the meat has become. So, after cooking for about an hour and a half to nearly an hour and 40 minutes, if I just touch that meat, it's just falling apart. Really nice. So good time now to basically turn on your oven. I'm just going to take the straight after filling this to my oven and basically cook it off. We will, once completed the pie, just place a couple of holes or pierce the crust on top so that any steam forming allows the steam to escape, otherwise we'll end up with um, bubbles in, in our pastry. You can actually smell the beef and the mushrooms. They've been cooking away for a while now. Next, take my... And actually, a little bit of flour on there, just to stop it from sticking. Place my pie crust over the rolling pin. Stop it from sticking. Okay. 
What I'm doing now is basically just cutting off the edges just to make sure that the excess is managed. So that's my excess. I'll leave that for a minute. I might use, use that for a leaf or two. Now what we want to do is just really just crimp and fold the edges and that basically seals the top and the bottom layer and that should stop anything from escaping. And I'm going to egg wash this and then pop this into the oven and then I'll come back and show you what the final product or the pie looks like. See in about an hour and a half, bye for now.